Hey, it's Dave. All right, I got a bunch of questions uh, on LinkedIn from Brendan Short, and um, I wrote a post basically about how I've been building this Exit 5 business that I have and some of the things that I'm spending my time on and what I'm doing. And he said, this is cool. I'd love to learn more about this stuff. I bet lots of other people would too. Um, and he said, I'm happy to send you 21 questions if that's helpful for what content create. And then he sent me a list of 21 questions. And so I figured I would record it. This will be a podcast episode and we'll chop this up in, into a video and hopefully get through all these pretty quickly in like a quick hit video. But if you want the longer form of this, you can go listen to the Dave Gerhardt podcast, plug it in, and I'll have this episode uh, up there for you. So question number one, what's the breakdown of revenue per SKU, community memberships, recruiting ads, sponsorships by SKU? I'm assuming he means like different ways I make revenue, <clears throat> product type. And right now, roughly the, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, I just got back from a run and I got a little hut in my throat. Uh, what's the breakdown of revenue per SKU? So it's roughly 50-50. I just say that for ease. It's roughly 50-50. Uh, 50% 50% of the revenue comes from uh, memberships. That's subscriptions for Exit 5, which is a community for B2B marketers. It's a paid community. And then the other 50% of that is from sponsors. And that sponsorship uh, revenue could be podcast sponsorship because I have the Exit 5 podcast. It could be newsletter sponsorship, which we also pair with like a promoted LinkedIn influencer type post. Uh, and we also do some other types of paid content and webinar uh, and webinars or, or online events. It's roughly 50-50. There's, uh, there's a job board that we have. It's very small. It's probably 2% of that uh, a month. And then I sometimes just get random other opportunities. But roughly it's 50-50. Uh, question number two, if you were starting from scratch today, what SKU would you start with? So if I was starting from scratch, I wouldn't start by charging for something. I think one of the reasons that I've been able to build this business is because I had a head start, because I had a fairly significant number of followers on LinkedIn, and that came through years of being in this industry, in this niche, and writing about content and having success and a track record at a couple companies. I had a podcast, I talked about marketing a lot, and so I already kind of had a following in that niche. And so when I decided to launch a paid community, there was already people there. And so if I were starting from scratch, I wouldn't charge for something right out of the gate. Uh, I don't think that can work. I think if you already have a name and an audience and a, a, a following online somewhere, then maybe yes, you can launch a, you could say, you know, hey, I have this thing and it costs X. Uh, or you have a newsletter and you can start charging for sponsorships. But I think right out of the gate, starting from scratch, you need to focus on free and giving away content for free and building a following and building a reputation. And then once you have an email list or followers on a social media platform, then you can think about how you might um, move that audience and then charge for the content. If I did have an audience already, uh, I would probably, I would say that the easiest one for most people to start with is sponsors, mainly because so many brands right now are tuned into finding influencers and not influencers in the sense of like a big name, like a Kardashian, but there's like this trend of micro influencers. And so if you have a small newsletter with a couple thousand subscribers, you could be charging a couple that you could be generating a couple thousand dollars a month in sponsorship, um, in revenue sponsorship in that in that niche. And so uh, let's say you start a newsletter uh, for VP of sales in B2B, right? You might only have 3,000 subscribers on that newsletter, but you could go out to companies that sell to that niche and, and offer them sponsorships and generate revenue that way. That would probably be the easiest way. And there's lots of ways to do that. It could be a podcast, it could be a newsletter, it could be video content, it could be social media, LinkedIn. There's lots of ways to generate sponsorship, sponsorship revenue that way. I think it's gonna be much harder for people to uh, do a paid community like Exit 5. Um, the other thing you could do is uh, create a course. And somebody like Justin Welsh has done, has made a ton of money doing this by creating, he got really good at LinkedIn, built a built big following on LinkedIn, and then basically created a course to teach other people how to do that. And now that course is just printing money for him. Um, you could do something similar like that. And so if you were in a niche, go and create, teach the skill that you've spent the last couple of years building up uh, and learning. And there are a lot of people out there who like to talk about online courses in like a scammy sense. I have no problem with them at all. Actually, my wife and I just bought one two weeks ago to help us with something that we're working through with our daughter. I've spent thousands of dollars of my own money on courses and everything from um, marketing to weightlifting to running to parenting to meditation. Like um, everybody 
I think the key is to have expertise in a niche and then you can teach that education and do it online and, and sell it. So sponsorships and creating a course would be the best path to start from scratch if I wanted to charge for something. Uh, question number three, will I do this forever? Uh, no, I will not. Uh, I see this as a season in my life and it's going well and I'm doing it right now. But what's fun about it is I have the optionality to go down different paths. Um, but this actually takes me the answer to question number four, which is, do you have a long-term goal with exit five slash what is your long-term goal? I don't really have a long-term goal with exit five. And I've actually been pr pretty public and intentional about, um, I'm not trying to turn this into a massive company. I'm not trying to hire people and build something huge. Uh, it's a great business for me personally right now. And it allows me to have a life that is very free and provide a lot of things for my family and give me lots of time with my wife and my kids at this point in my life, which is the most important thing. So I'm going to keep it going, but I don't have intentions to turn this into a, a big company or do this for 10 or 20 years. The way that I actually see it is it's more of like an investment property of mine that I am spending time on each week to generate income and continue to grow. Uh, I don't, I don't see a reason to ever like stop it or cancel it, but I see myself more as over time, this becomes one thing that I do in a portfolio of multiple things that I have. And that's not all going to be related to, to the marketing space either. It could be uh, real estate. It could be writing. It could be writing a book, a children's book, doing a YouTube channel, uh, buying a local business. I don't, I'm making all those things up. I don't have any interest in doing those things, but I see this as one of many things that I will do. And my goal is to just kind of play this game and use it as a way to create the life that I want with the people that I love and want to spend time uh, with. And it also gives me lots of freedom to do things like be more involved in the community in my kid's life, be home. And that's the most important thing to me. Uh, number five, uh, have I ever considered building a micro SaaS business? Uh, I have, and I don't want any, <clears throat> I don't want any of the headaches. I think there's uh, lots of other ways that I can generate income and create revenue, but I've thought about that because yes, having a, uh, a large audience and an engaged community of people in a niche, like it's a very, logical next step to then like create a product to sell to them. Uh, I just, I'm not a product person. I don't want to go and hire engineers and developers to go and build that. So um, if that was something that I was more interested in, it would be a great revenue strategy, but uh, I'm not interested in, in doing that right now. Uh, number six, how many hours a week do I work? Probably 15, maybe 15, 20 hours a week. And um, I was thinking about this the other day because I saw someone write about this. It's, it's very easy to say that's not a lot, but I think what's amazing about this business and this, uh, what Exit 5 has allowed me and just the overall business that I've created is I have a ton of leverage now. And so like I might only have to put in two to three hours a day, but because it's a online community with thousands of members. There's a podcast that has a big audience. I have a LinkedIn following and newsletter audience <clears throat> with, with big, uh, with a lot, with a bunch of subscribers. Like those are all channels that have given me leverage. It's like you can create this digital leverage. And so I don't need to be in an office taking meetings and calls and doing presentations for eight to 10 hours a day, or I'm not doing any consulting. And so I don't have any clients because now I've kind of shifted my focus to all of these highly scalable digital channels. And so I'm, I'm able to do this in a couple hours a day. I also am at a different point in my life now where because of the age of my kids and because of having a little bit of success, like I'm not grinding my face off right now, <laughs> working, you know, 40, 50, 60 plus hours a week. That's just not what I'm interested in doing. Now, if everything went to zero, if my whole business went to zero, then I might have to do that. But I'm in a position right now where I'm not. And so a good sweet spot for me lately has been between two and four hours of focus work a day. I usually like to split that up. There's about one to two hours in there of like what I would call deep work. And that's writing, creating, strategy, planning, thinking about things. And there's one to two hours of more admin stuff that's getting through my inboxes and Slack and DMs and uh, working with my you know, accountant or a sponsor or taking a call from somebody. Um, so I usually split it up that way. Seven, how many inbounds across all your channels do I get per day? Inbounds meaning like inbound opportunities uh, this could be a sponsorship opportunity. This could be, can you speak on this podcast? Can you present at this webinar? Can you do this event? Can you do this thing? 
Um, I would say probably like I get five to 10 of them per week. So one to two a day. Uh, not all of them are good, obviously, but there's usually two or three a week. And what's interesting that I've noticed about having sponsors and having, um, yeah, particularly sponsors with Exit 5, it's like having sponsors attracts other sponsors. And so this is why I encourage people who want to generate sponsors or, or, or come up with some type of revenue is like, tell people that you have that because then they will know. And so by me having sponsors, I now see every single week I'm getting replies to the newsletter or emails about the podcast and saying, hey, I heard the ad for so-and-so. Uh, when's the next spot open? Or we would like to do that. And so like my newsletter right now is booked out for the next 60 days, which is we only do one one a week, right? So that's eight weeks. But I'm booked out for two months because um, once a week or so, I'm getting a response to an email that's saying, hey, we'd like to sponsor. What, what's the you know, audience size? What are the terms? And can we hold the next day? So that's given me a, that's given me a lot of leverage. Uh, number eight, now that you're a little ways in, do you think it was the right decision to move from DGMG, personally branded to Exit 5? I do 100%. It was the right decision for me personally based on where I want to go and what I want to do. So I made that decision intentionally because I don't want to be Dave, the marketing guy, the marketing influencer forever. If I wanted to do that forever, then I would have gone much harder and tried to become like the Gary V of this thing and really focus hard on my name. But I wanted to shift that and I see Dave, me as somebody who might do multiple things in this world of entrepreneurship, right? And Exit 5 is going to be one of them. I see it as a product line. I also think it gives me an opportunity that if I wanted to sell this at some point in the future, I could, where it's not directly tied to my name and my face. I can still add value by being involved and having it be Dave is involved, but to change from DGMG to Exit 5, it was the right decision for me, and I just wish that I did it a little bit sooner, um, but it's been great. And to anybody who's thinking about a rebrand or a name change, what's funny is that um, there was about a month or two months where people were confused by it, and now it's like it never, ha it's like it's always been that way, and people only know Exit 5. I also knew it was the right time to rebrand when my accountant, I play golf with him, he asked me, so how are things going at GGMD? And I'm like, oh man, I got to come up with a better name for this. Uh, number nine, how much uh, do you think about platform strategy much? For example, focusing on LinkedIn versus email, what mental models that you do you use there? Um, I think it's both. For me, I have a head start on LinkedIn. I just happen to have much more, uh, a bigger following there. And so I'm actually trying to play more catch up uh, with email. LinkedIn has been great and it continues to be the number one channel for me. And I see it in the attribution of when people, uh, you know, either reach out to me directly or sign up for Exit 5. And so I see that and that just means focus more on LinkedIn. And so LinkedIn is just something that I do. And it's also why I focus on LinkedIn more than Twitter. I have fun using Twitter, but it's more of like a fun little mess around channel for me where LinkedIn specifically in this B2B niche drives a ton of business. And now I'm just trying to play catch up with email. I didn't focus on building the email, uh, the exit five email list and newsletter for a while. Um, and so I had, you know, the, the, I have like 150 something thousand followers on LinkedIn, but there's only 12,000 email subscribers, which is high considering that there's 3,000 paying members of the community. I think that there's a world where I should have 20, 30, 40, 50,000 email subscribers for Exit 5. And so I'm trying to catch up more there. I don't have a ton of, I'm not a big mental models guy. I think people, uh, mental models and frameworks are very uh, popular social media content just because people like to be given frameworks. But for me, it's more just about like LinkedIn is working. It's been working for five, six, seven years now. I don't see it until it stops working, I'm going to keep doing it. Uh, I want to own the email list. And also now that I'm doing more with sponsorship and the newsletter sponsorship as a revenue channel for me, I care more about email. And so I'm focused on driving more people there. Also, as I think about my longer term strategy for like Dave, me as the kind of like house of brands and having Exit 5 and maybe other projects or this podcast or whatever, I'm focusing, maybe I might start my own, you know, Dave email list, but um, for now it's LinkedIn for Exit 5, LinkedIn for me personally, and I'm starting to build up Exit 5 email list. 
Uh, 10, what term do you like best for people like you? Influencer, creator, B2B creator, something like else, something else you're unique because you're now a founder more than a creator. Uh, I don't like any, I don't really like or care about any of those terms. I honestly, this is a real honest answer. I'm just Dave <laughs> and I'm vote. I have a business that happens to be an online business. I sometimes call it a creator business because I know that I see people writing about that online. And I think that term attract, it, it attracts them to think that my business is interesting. People, you know, the creator economy and solopreneurship have exploded. And so I sometimes use those terms to like, as a clickbaity way of like attracting people to my stuff and my content. But, um, I'm just, Dave and I think personally I've kind of always been a creator of some sorts. I had my first podcast back in uh, 2014, so I've been doing this for nine years. I had a podcast, a website, a newsletter, sponsorships even before I was CMO. So I guess I've always kind of been more of a creator, but I like the term founder because uh, I'm. It's a business, it's a full business that I've started. Uh, I wouldn't call myself an influencer. Although I do get influencer opportunities, I just think that term, people don't like that term, but it is it, it is true. Like I have influence in a niche and brands want to work with me on specific things to get eyeballs to their customers on it. That's true, but that's not who I am. That's not what I define my full-time job as. Same as a creator. I think there's like a, a lot of nuance in all the things. I don't really care what the term is. Uh, I'm Dave and my plan is to uh, find ways to make money and generate income and build a life of freedom. So I don't ever have to go back to working inside of a, uh, inside of a company so I can go for a run in the middle of the day. I can work out in the middle of the day. I can play golf when I want. I can see my family and say no to all work travel, whatever role that is. That's the, that's what you can call me. Uh, <clears throat> 11, how many miles did I run this weekend? I ran one cause I went to Dallas to watch the Patriots game with a bunch of friends and, uh, one morning, I just did a one mile run, 100 push ups, 100 squats. I did run three miles today. Right now, I've been ru running about 20 miles uh, a week, which has been a nice uh, sweet spot. Um, 12, do you get spotted in public much? No, thank goodness. That seems like, like being actually famous seems like it'd be the worst thing ever. And so, no, particularly now, there was a time where there was a couple year stretch where Drift, the company that, that I was at, was had a lot of buzz and popularity in the Boston startup world. And we lived right in Boston. And so I would see people, you know, in the neighborhood and stuff, but, um, no, and thank goodness. Cause that's awful. Uh, 13, what do you think of crypto slash NFTs? Don't really have an opinion. I'm not much of a finance guy. I'm not into the markets. I'm not into finance. Uh, I don't have a strong opinion on crypto. Um, seems like a interesting idea. Uh, I guess from everything that I've read, I've read a book or, or two about it and just, just to be uh, just a, as a topic to get smarter about, it's not something that I'm personally interested in. So I don't have an opinion, uh, NFTs, I don't fully understand it. And so it's not for me. Um, and don't take that as my opinion on the take of a market. Like I'm literally, I, I, I do this business. I play golf. I work out, I hang out with my family. I'm not somebody that and it's, uh, it all kind of all ties back to like why I'm not growing exit five to be this massive business. I'm not really interested in personal finance and finance in general and markets and all that stuff. I'm like, oh, I found a way to make money and I'm putting it in a bank account and I have a financial advisor and we do stuff through him and that's good enough for me. So um, I don't have much interest in, in those channels. Uh, 14, do you believe in aliens? Uh, yes, because I think the universe is just way too big to think that we're the only people out there. I don't think they look like the ones that we've seen, but I, I definitely believe in in aliens. Uh, oh, it's only 14 questions because he said 21 questions is a lot. I'll just leave it here for now. Thanks for building in public. All right. That's my answers, open and honest answers to these 14 questions from you, Brendan. I hope this is helpful. Thanks for listening. Send me a message uh, on LinkedIn. Go to LinkedIn and send me a DM, DM if you listen to this or send me an email, dg at davegerhardt.com. Let me know that you listen to this. Maybe I'll do more content about how I'm creating my business and other topics like this. All right. See ya.